You're watching a film called Irish Luck from 1939. This is a scene featuring Sheila Darcy and Frankie Darrow. It was during the making of this film that he worked with Aloha Ray. Ray was an extra in the film. Desk, please. Do we have a Thaddeus Porter registered here? Yes. Okay, thank you. Is he here? Yes, ma'am. He's in suite 8B. That's just down the hall around the corner. Would you like to have me call him? No. Frankie Darrow and Aloha Ray to wed. Frankie Darrow, 21, the film actor and former boy star, had a date at the Marriage License Bureau today. He and Aloha Ray, 22, also of the films, his boyhood sweetheart, announced their engagement last week when they finished a movie, Irish Luck, together. They said they would be married this week in Glendale at the Wee Kirk O the Heather and would honeymoon in Northern California. Aloha Ray was born Laura Wright on April 11, 1917. She met Darrow in acting school when they were kids. She had wanted to be a lead actress, but that never happened. Most of her career, she had been a stand-in for actresses like Jane Wyman, Olivia de Havilland, Merle Oberon, and Barbara Stanwyck. For the next few years, happily married Frankie Darrow kept acting and appearing on the stage. From now on, I see nothing, speak nothing, and hear nothing. Woman, your time has come. You're killing me! No! Come here, basket quick. Mm, Mr. Buzzard, now don't forget the monkeys. In 1939, Frankie made the first of nine films with Matt and Morlin. And although the films had the usual racism that you'd expect in a film of the time period, apparently Frankie did his best to keep it to a minimum, and Morlin had nothing but good things to say about Frankie in later years. <laughs> what did I tell you? Here come the cops. Now listen, you keep quiet. I'll get out of this. Good pay and steady work. Wait, wait. Did I hear somebody say wait? Yeah, look, here it is. Truck drivers wanted. Good pay and steady work. Now that part about good pay is fine. But what about the steady work part? Well, what about it? John Glasky, who wrote a book entitled Tough Kid, The Life and Films of Frankie Darrow, had this to say about Moreland and Darrow's relationship. Frankie and Matt and Moreland were very close. Moreland suggested the name of Frankie's daughter. Frankie respected Matt's talents and understood how important he was to the success of the films they did together. I had the pleasure of meeting Matt in a few times and he spoke highly of Frankie. Frankie was an honorary pallbearer at Matt's funeral in 1973. Years after they made their films together, Moreland had this to say about those films not appearing on TV. It's because I had to call him Mr. Frankie in the picture so they could be shown in the South. People would object today, but I wouldn't. Darrow gave Matten his first break and thereby broke the color line at Monogram. He's a wonderful man, Matten said. He really fought for me. In 1940, Frankie appeared in one of the biggest films of the year. Well, I shouldn't say appeared in the film, but he was heard in it. It was Walt Disney's Pinocchio, and he played Lampwick, the naughty and spoiled boy who Pinocchio befriends and then is turned into a donkey on Pleasure Island. Conscience. Nah, fooey. Where does he get that stuff? How do you ever expect to be a real boy? What's he think I look like? A jackass? Frankie Darrow, veteran at 22. Frankie Darrow, 22 year old film star who has been a screen luminary since the age of four, recently completed Laughing at Danger, currently showing at the Riviera Theater, after returning from a personal appearance tour at the nation's theaters. Frankie was seen on the stage of theaters in Chicago, Detroit, Camden, Philadelphia, New York, Providence, Boston, and Worcester. But this live appearance was nothing new to him as he appeared in his parents' tumbling act at the age of three. But in July of 1941, his marriage came to an end. Frankie Darrow and his wife of three years, Laura Ray, have separated and, according to rumor, are discussing a divorce. The following year, he put his career on hold by doing what a lot of men were doing at the time, and that was to join the military. 
Frankie Darrow, 24, bad boy juvenile film actor, today was looking to active service in the U.S. Navy. Applying for enlistment papers in the Navy, Darrow told recruiting officers, stick me wherever I can do the most good for my country. In March of 1943, Frankie got married again. This time it was to Betty Moreau of Long Beach. In the Navy, Frankie was assigned as a pharmacist at a hospital in New Guinea. Once the war was over, Frankie returned to acting. He was now 28 years old and he signed a contract with Monogram Pictures. Frankie Darrow, boy actor, has returned to Hollywood after nearly four years in the Navy, during which he served as a first-class pharmacist's mate in numerous engagements in the South Pacific. Now 25 years old, Frankie has been signed by Monogram Pictures and is about to become a father. Yes, it was true. Frankie and Betty were now expecting a child. Now Monogram Pictures was among the smaller studios at the time, one of the Poverty Row Studios. And I would guess that Frankie wasn't thrilled about it, but it was work. And the first picture for the 28-year-old Navy veteran, who was a man once divorced, now remarried with a child on the way, was a film in which he played a high school student. He would act alongside Freddie Stewart, June Prezer, Noel Neal, and others that were known as the Teenagers. The first of these films was Junior Prom from 1946. And I'm sure it wasn't the acting role Frankie was hoping for, but now he had a wife and daughter to support, and it was work. Hey, Betty, you've been crying. I have not. It's just, it's so true. Oh, well, look, Betty, please listen to me. I know I don't deserve it, but please, honest, I'm awful sorry about all this. Why don't you watch where you're going? Oh, well, gee, Betty, I'm sorry. Oh! oh. oh. <laughs> Very funny. Betty, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to... Oh, my glasses. Oh, gee, Betty, I'm sorry. Ow! Oh. <laughs> and then, well... Actor Frankie Darrow sued for divorce. Frankie Darrow, who is 28, still plays teenager roles in pictures, today was sued for divorce by Mrs. Betty Darrow on mental cruelty charges. Darrow, recently discharged from the armed forces, and his wife, a former theater cashier, were married in 1943 and separated last week. According to Betty, Frankie inflicted upon her extreme cruelty and caused her great mental suffering. Frankie Darrow, divorced by wife, called drunk. Frankie Darrow, 28, who plays high school heroes in movies, was divorced by his wife today because he spent his time at home getting drunk. Miss Betty Marie Darrow was awarded $275 a month for support of their child, Darlene, one, when she'd received a decree on mental cruelty charges yesterday. Then I found this blurb that I thought was odd. What's this about Frankie Darrow getting fed up with Mickey Rooney during the filming of a fight scene and slugging him into dreamland? Oddly, I couldn't find a film in which Frankie and Rooney were in together, but who knows? In 1948, Frankie played in four Bowery Boy films. By this time, work was getting harder to find, and there were hardly the starring roles he once appeared in. When you're not one of the main actors in a Poverty Row film, I can only assume the pay wasn't all that great. In 1950, he got a role in the Universal Picture Western film, Wyoming Male. It was reported that it was his 500th film, but I'm not so sure about that. IMDb shows a total of 187 credits during his life, but you never know. Maybe there were a lot of uncredited silent films that aren't on the list. By 1951, Frankie was being cast less and less. On top of that, television started appearing in homes all over the country, and he found his old films were constantly being run on this new medium. Sadly, he made no money for his fame on the tube, nor did this exposure result in any new work. Now curiously, I thought Frankie and his second wife were divorced in 1947, but in 1951, more articles about their divorce started appearing in papers. I'm not sure if they had gotten back together or what, but now, Frankie Darrow's wife sheds him over liquor use. Former film actor Frankie Darrow drank too much and gave her household gifts that were later repossessed when he couldn't pay for them. His wife, Betty Marie, charged today in divorcing him? 
Mrs. Darrow, 30, said she knew before they were married that Frankie, who played tough kid roles in the movies, drank too much, but she thought things would get better. But they didn't. Divorce without scars. Film actor Frankie Darrow's wife, Betty Marie, was granted a divorce today, testifying that he drank and beat her, but she admitted that his blows didn't hurt too much. He never left any marks on me, she told her lawyer. Divorce Frankie Darrow for beating gambling. Mrs. Frankie Darrow, wife of the actor, won a divorce Monday on her testimony that he drank, beat her, gambled, and didn't know how to handle money when he had it. They were married in 1943. Mrs. Darrow was awarded $75 a month in support of their six-year-old daughter. So what do you do when you have a problem with money and you drink too much? For Frankie, he became part owner of a bar called Try Later, in which he also bartended. Guess the name of the manager of Try Later in Santa Monica? Frankie Darrow, ex-child actor. Darrow explains the Try Later as follows. You know when you call Central Casting? They will tell you two things on the phone. No work or try later. He adds, this is my first venture into this business. I've always wanted to own a bar. I've spent so much time on the other side of bars that I thought I'd get behind one and get even. When he became aware of the fact that his old films were being shown again around the country on TV, Frankie figured this would set him up for some fresh offers from Hollywood. But they've been few and far between so far. I'm not bitter about it, he says, but I sure hope this Rogers guy can make that TV suit stick. Gee, if I could get 10 bucks for every one of my movies on TV, I'd be sitting pretty. For this Rogers guy, he was talking about Roy Rogers, who was trying his hardest to get money for his old films that were now being shown on television. Where is Frankie Darrow now? When Cowboy star Roy Rogers won his TV injunction suit here last month against Republic Pictures, it set the hearts of several old-time actors to throbbing. Unless Republic can win an appeal, the picture company is restrained from releasing some 80 of Rogers' old movies to TV without agreeing to some type of royalty payment plan for the celluloid cowboy. Many a TV veteran actor who today can't afford to buy a TV set to watch their old starring vehicles being shown on video now feels he may have a chance to cash in on this new bonanza. Quite by accident, I found one of these forgotten movie heroes the other day, and there was no doubt he can use the percentage of the moolah which his old films are now netting from TV. His name is Frankie Darrow, and he's currently riding herd on a bunch of Shetland ponies at Kitty's Hollywood Park, an amusement park for small fry located at Crenshaw and Exposition Boulevards. Hollywood bartender is TV regular without pay. A guy who tends bar in a Hollywood bistro is up on top with television stars like Milton Berle and Hopalong Cassidy today without pay. This bartender ranks in 100 fan mail letters a week. He signs over by autograph hounds and there's hardly a day when you can't see him on your television set. Frankie isn't bitter because he can't collect a set for the reissues of his old movies because as he grins, it's great publicity, something you couldn't buy. The other Sunday, four of my old films were on television, he says, and at least two a week are shown around the country. Andy Devine made the gag the other day that he has the only television set in town with Frankie Darrow built in. Every time he turns it on, there I am. By 1951, Frankie began appearing on TV shows, playing parts in shows like The Adventure of Wild Bill Hickok and The Red Skelton Show, in which he played a little old lady. Hi, Lefty. I checked like you said. That was a judge's window I tossed the rock to, all right. Can't understand it. We should have heard from him by now. Maybe his wife ain't told him about it yet. My mother told me to write you because I bother her too much, writes Shirley Ann Padway of Van Nuys, California. I am 10 years old and I watch television. My favorite on television is Frankie Darrow. I see him in movies on television all the time and he's very nice. I would like to have a picture of him for my room, but my mother can't tell me where I could write to Frankie to ask him for a picture. So he said I should write you and you would let me know. He's very nice. Is he in real movies too? How old is he? Love and kisses. Brace yourself, Shirley Ann. Frankie Darrow is now a little older than he was when he made those movies you see on television. He's still a fine actor at 34 and he isn't making enough real movies these days. He owns a cafe bar in Hollywood called Try Later. 
Do you remember Frankie Darrow? He's now a bartender in Los Angeles. If you remember, Frankie was one of Hollywood's top stars and a former dead-end kid. 30th Screen Year Frankie Darrow celebrates the start of his 30th year in pictures with a supporting role in Paramount's Live It Up Technicolor comedy, co-starring Dean Martin, Jerry Lewis, and Janet Lee. Hollywood's youngest screen veteran began his career in 1924 as a four-year-old player in Judgment of the Storm. In 1954, he joined Ralph Hubbard to star in a song and dance review. Frankie Darrow, who probably has more old movies starring himself on TV than anybody, had a chance this week to make something new. He is out at the Hell Road Studios playing an ex-jockey in one of the Public Defender series. Let's have that wallet. What wallet? Come on, give. Look, all I'm doing is minding my own business, and you come along and give me Knock nothing. Knock it off, up against the wall. Go on. You ain't gonna find nothing. Told you I ain't got no wallet. Who told you? I got ears. What'd that Matthews ever do for you except get you six months on the honor farm and two years probation? Yeah, but he said... I don't care what he said. Look, I got a lot of dough wrapped up, and you and you're gonna stick around and work it out. All right, now, suppose I don't want to. I'll tell you what, if you don't want to, Matthews will drag you into court and the judge will give you a year, this time in a pen. But between his sporadic acting work and his bartending, he was still having problems keeping up with his child support payments and soon found himself in court. Actor Frankie Darrow, 36, was free on $500 bail today after police arrested him on a non-support warrant filed by his former wife, Betty Craneborn, 35. Darrow was charged with failing to pay $75 a month in child support for his daughter, Darlene, 8. Actor Frankie Darrow, arrested on a non-support charge, says film work for him has been pretty spotty lately in recent years. He was arrested yesterday on a warrant signed by his ex-wife, Betty Darrow. She charged that he had failed to support their nine-year-old daughter, Darlene. Darrow, released on $500 bond, remarked, She says I owe her $1,570, but I keep telling her you can't get blood out of a rock. My wife told me she was going to have me put in jail, and I told her to go ahead, he said. Frankie Darrow, who in his day matched salary figures with Mickey Rooney, is penniless. In 1955, Frankie had sort of a comeback. He was in a major Hollywood film. It was Forbidden Planet. If you don't remember him from the film, well, that's because he was inside Robbie the Robot. He wears an uncomfortable 84 pound, six foot 10 inch costume to portray a genius robot in the year 2020. His own body not only isn't seen, but a mechanical trick voice will be dubbed in for the robot's conversation. But I don't mind, Frankie said cheerfully. This is a lot of fun. Besides, I've seen a million people I used to know on the MGM lot. It might lead to regular acting roles. But there is some controversy on whether he played the robot the whole time. According to the book, The Very Watching Time of Night, Dark Alleys of Classic Horror Cinema by Gregory Williams Mank, Incidentally, Frankie Darrow was less sure-footed 25 years later when he played Robbie the Robot in MGM's Forbidden Planet. After a multi-martini lunch, Frankie almost took a nosedive, coming this close to falling flat on his face in the expensive robot suit, and MGM fired him. Richard Dick said in the book Earth vs. the Sci-Fi Filmmakers, 20 interviews by Tom Weaver, I remember this guy that worked inside of Robbie the Robot. He was a little guy, Frankie Darrow. One time he got drunk and couldn't work Robbie the Robot. He got inside that thing and just couldn't do it. There were various different levers and pedals and stuff that you had to work from inside the robot. Finally, he had to say, I can't handle it. Plus, if I remember right, he was sweating like a pig. There were others who believed that it wasn't alcohol that caused his problems. It was the heat inside the suit that caused him to be unsure of himself. And even our pharmacist mate. Well, what's the matter, Dooley? Well, he seems to Just have a... Just a minute. Mm. I don't know, sir. I only hope I can last the day out. Oh. But even with the occasional acting job, he still had trouble paying child support. Former child actor faces support trial. 
Frankie Darrow, 39, former child actor, will be tried October 22nd on charges of failing to meet support payments to his 11-year-old daughter. Darrow told the municipal court yesterday that lack of work was the reason. His former wife, Betty M. Craneborn, 36, filed the charges. Ex-movie sprite due on video. 25 years ago, actor Frankie Darrow stood 5'3 and weighed 125 pounds. Movie casting directors put him in nearly every jockey role that came along. Through the succeeding years, he's played leprechauns, boxers, bellhops, pickpockets, dancers, cowboys, junior grade, racetrack touts, and gangsters. All in all, he's filled nearly 500 film roles. Although he'll admit having amassed nothing resembling a fortune, Frankie wouldn't have changed a thing. I've been acting since I can remember, he said. It's been a wonderful life. If it's true that the westward move of so many TV shows has opened up more acting opportunities than ever before in Hollywood's history, it seems mighty strange to this observer from the sidelines that a fine actor like Frankie Darrow has to make his living as a bartender. Long career for Frankie Darrow. Former child star Frankie Darrow was celebrating his 37th year in show business. I'll be 41 on December 22nd, confesses Frankie, and I started in the motion picture business when I was four. Don't get the idea that I loafed around before that, he laughs. My folks had a vaudeville act and I toured with them. Earned my own living right from the start. I've been a tumbler all my life. Worked out on the beach every day when I'm not doing pictures. I still weigh only 118 pounds. Here's your turkey, Mr. Post. <laughs> turkey? What turkey? Well, you phoned and ordered a turkey an hour ago. <laughs> Good afternoon. Uh, I have a package here, sir. Uh, could you get somebody to sign it for me, please? What was counterfeit money doing in the vault of the First National Bank? Mister, if you want to know, you'll have to buy a paper. I ain't no special news service. I wonder what it was doing there. Oh, waiting at the bank for disposal. Makes sense. Hey! You take those? And that's pretty much where our story of Frankie Darrow ends. One of the last times he appeared in the paper was about an alleged indecent exposure charge on which he was found drunk and without pants. After spending a weekend in the county jail, the charges were dropped. And then there was this article from 1963. Former kid star Frankie Darrow gets credit for the what have you done for me lately agent story making the rounds here. Frankie was standing in line to collect his unemployment check in Hollywood when a friend in front of him asked, how come your agent doesn't keep you working? Don't ask me, Frankie replied. Ask my agent. He's in line directly behind me. He's collecting too. Hey Frankie, it might have been time to look for a new agent. He only had a few roles in his later years. His last was Fugitive Lovers from 1975, in which he played Lester the Drunk. Well, good morning, Lester. Certainly a pleasure to have you back with us again. Hiya, Sergeant. It's good to see your ugly waist again. Hi, you baby. Hi, Dad. <laughs> you hear that, Sergeant? She says, hi, you handsome. This lady's got class. But he wasn't forgotten. Question, I would like to know if Frankie Darrow is still acting in the movies and how I can write him. DMD, Bridgeport, Connecticut. Certainly there are plenty of good old westerns for the kids to see. I have told my kids a lot about the hero of my day, Frankie Darrow. He was my hero too. To me, he was 10 feet tall. It was on Christmas Day in 1976, according to Wikipedia, that he was visiting his ex-wife and his stepdaughter, Christy. I can only assume this was Dorothy Carroll, who he met soon after his divorce from Betty Marie. Some websites say they were married, but apparently there was no evidence of this. Anyway, it was while visiting that Frankie died of a heart attack. He was just three days away from his 59th birthday. His death went unnoticed by the media. Writer John Glosky, who wrote the biography of Frankie, knew Frankie during the last four to five years of his life. 
On the website bewesterns.com, he had this to say. By the 1970s, Frankie was destitute and living in a rundown hotel on Hollywood Boulevard. I met and befriended Frankie in June of 1972. His days of stardom had long since passed and he had been virtually forgotten by Hollywood. Even during this difficult period, Frankie remained optimistic and was grateful for the career he once had. He loved telling stories about his days of stardom, but he was also careful never to say an unkind word about anyone. <laughs>